Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, my little degenerates. It's your boy, Mr. Degenerate, back at it again for another video. Ooh, we, ooh, we. We did it. All right. Dreams don't die. All right. If anybody tells you dreams die, dreams don't die, man. It just gets stronger and stronger every year. Because we did it. Marvel fans, rejoice, man. Rejoice. We fucking did it. We're finally getting a Marvel versus Capcom fighting collection like this is monumental all right this is this is super monumental you don't understand how much this shit means to to me and many others why so much people was losing their fucking minds why so much people were crying including myself why so much people was fucking putting up fan art of fucking spider-man and, and, and morgan <laughs> Which, fun fact, that's actually my first introductory to Morgan from the Dark Starkers was Marvel vs. Capcom. And those that's actually my first team. So to see people make fan art warms my heart. But to see that the dream is alive and that it's real, it's real, truly is monumental. And... For this video, I wanted to kind of explain why this moment is so important, man. Why it's so why it's so meaningful to see Ryu and fucking Cyclops not hold handshake each other, dag each other up with the fucking bro handshake. <laughs> why this moment is so powerful to so many people. Um because I, I've seen a few people online, not all, but a few people online is like, why the fuck is people getting excited for old ass games? Oh, well, this game was already available for uh, Fightcade. You know, you we already had the game, so this is not new. And I, to that I say, if you feel that way and you don't see why this moment is so important to people, then you have you have no idea the amount of love and care that is the marvel versus capcom uh community has for this product you know nothing and you need to shut the fuck up all right because i'm about to school you on why this shit is important and i'm also going to give a history lesson so where do i begin well let's bring it back to 1993 with the first ever collab which is funny is in the collection, the Punisher game. Uh, this game will mark the first ever collab with Marvel and Capcom. And it was a weird collab because fucking Capcom was, Marvel I should say, not Capcom. Marvel was so impressed, <laughs> was so disturbed actually is the better term by how violent the game was they were like, okay, that's crazy. <laughs> but that was their friendship. That was that was how their partnership had began. And at the time, I want to make this clear, that around this time, it was very easy to get the license to a lot of these characters uh, and to do stuff with Marvel license because at the time, Marvel was going through bankruptcy. And... You know, it was very cheap to get any Marvel's license, but that was the first time Marvel had really put their trust in a uh, in a Japanese company, and they actually loved the result despite it being super violent. But even though it fit with Punisher, but there would be one person who brought it together, who who literally led the charge to say, "Hey." Let's make a Marvel fighting game. And that would be none other than Katsuya Kitomo. I'm probably butchering that really bad. So I please forgive me. Uh, he was the one that led the charge. He was such a huge fan of Western comic books, like American comic books. He was literally, and this is how dedicated he was to marvel in particular he fucking loved marvel heroes this man would literally translate every single comic book they had in the office any marvel comic book he would translate it for his 
co uh, fellow co-workers to read. This is how passionate this motherfucker was to the point where he would he would talk to his bosses, talk to Marvel bosses, and talk to his bosses and say, "We want to make a fighting game. We want to do this. We want to do that." And for some odd reason, both Marvel and Capcom, the execs over at Marvel and the execs over at Capcom, was able to sit down and talk it over just because of this one motherfucker. All right, this Chad was the one that led the charge. Uh, and a lot of y'all probably know him. Any Darkstalkers fan would know him because he was the creator of Darkstalkers, by the way. But yeah, he was he was the Chad. And the first game that they was able to make together was uh, X-Men Children of the Atom. That was the first ever Marvel fighting game done by Capcom. And it was a cool ass fucking game. Busted, but cool. Then, uh, a year later, they were able to get the rights to other Marvel characters, and that was literally a game called Marvel Superheroes, and that was another beat em up game that was taking huge inspiration from the Infinity um, Gauntlet storyline, because around that time, Infinity, Gaunt uh, Infinity Gauntlet in the comic books was big and popular. But also, the reason why they were able to get the X-Men is because around that time, in the 90s, the fucking X-Men was banging. We had the 90s X-Men show. We, we, we were fucking banging in terms of comic books. Uh, a few years later on, we would get the, the, the X-Men movie. The X-Men was the shit. So, for Marvel, their idea, even though they're getting the IPs were cheap, their idea was, we want to outsource our our ips to japanese company like capcom so it would have a, a, a japanese they would be heading overseas making money overseas of their ip and sadly those games did not do particularly well in japan because japan has a very weird strict thing where if it's not a japanese developer game in the arcades they didn't give a fuck about it if it's american we don't give a fuck we don't respect that shit fuck that shit but in the fucking u.s fucking marvel superheroes and fucking children and adam with the shit everybody fucking loved it and it gave capcom enough confidence to be like okay let's talk let's talk to marvel again now what if we get the street fighter and the x-men to fight and that's when we got X-Men vs. Street Fighter. And that game was even dope. Because you had the X-Men characters, the most popular X-Men characters at the time, and the most popular Street Fighter characters at the time, duking it out. And what was so fascinating, because they were like, yo, like it, it, the X-Men are like super bombastic characters that have powers and shit. What can we do to spice this shit up and make it cool? Well, let's give all the Street let's make all the Street Fighter characters fucking super powered, overpowered shit. And it was fucking dope, you know. It they by doing that they made the Capcom characters even more cooler <laughs> by getting on them level. And it, it was such a mom momentous moment. It was such a great moment. And a lot of that contributing factor on why it started getting more better and better and more popular was because. This was the Versus series was the first ever like fighting game from Capcom where they tried to appeal to the casual audience so much by adding in, you know, easy mode, turbo mode for uh, for for a hardcore audience, but also like easy control, just stuff, flashy moves, super jump, all these crazy combative stuff that you see in Marvel versus Capcom. Like X Men versus Street Fighter laid that foundation, and it got even more crazier when we got to Marvel versus Capcom. Marvel versus Capcom added even more. Now you have not only can you switch at any moment in the game for characters, but now you have a, a assist assist attacks, which had cameos from different walks of the Marvel and Capcom license. And it was wild. Like Marvel vs. Capcom is, uh, it was it was peak. It was like you thought it was peak, but you ain't seen shit yet. 
all right it was so good though it was so much fun so colorful and so just badass I, I think the only issue that game had and that was more behind the scenes with getting certain characters like spider-man and venom in particular because like spider-man is such a popular character for marvel that he was tied into other video games so it's like working out that license was like crazy but other than that it was cheap to get the characters and it was fucking brilliant again i can't stress how much i keep referencing how cheap the characters was because that's a very important factor when we get into the later on games but then this is when marvel blew the fuck up this is when capcom said fuck it we're going to Bobby Smore dance this shit, and we going hard as a motherfucker. We locked in. Then they came up with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And I already talked about what Marvel vs. Capcom 2 meant to me, but this game was the pinnacle of, of fucking fighting games. Up to this day, you can't run to a grocery store, a laundromat, motherfucker, a uh, 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 fucking arcade place anywhere anywhere that had a marvel vs. capcom 2 cabinet and once you hear capcom present and not run to the fucking cabinet <laughs> all right get hit by the fucking by a fucking car and you still move into the fucking uh, cabinet just to make your way because marvel vs. capcom 2 was peak shit it had the biggest roster and yeah, some of them was retreads, like copy and paste, <laughs> but it didn't fucking matter because it had the most smoothest gameplay of all of them. It had 3v3 fighting. You could switch in between. You had, they took away the assist, um, the special assist, and then replaced with every character is now an assist character, and every character has three assists. Some is useful, some is um, not, and some is situational. Everything. Not only that, the music was fucking banging i know people like to say the music was uh was trash which i find i i find that weird hearing that but the music was fire as fuck all right we had this jazz tune to it obviously we had the most iconic tune i want to take you for a ride And it's banging and it gets you prepared for what's to come. The game is just fundamental. Fun as fuck and easy to play. Anybody could pick up Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and just play their favorite character and start busting ass. But then, when you get into hardcore motherfuckers, oh my goodness. Seeing that shit played on a high level is fucking dangerous. I don't need to tell you all the crazy and cool moments that either Justin Wong or any other uh, person from the, the fighting community has come up with Marvel vs. Capcom. Marvel vs. Capcom 2's combat system was so peak. Uh, you had the fucking super cancels, which you can cancel one super into then your, uh, your other character comes in and do their super, into another one of your characters come in and do their super. It was fucking dope then if you want you can just do like some fucking uh, straight out of a comic book where all the characters are using their special move at the same time you could have done shit like that it was like peak shit and again the roster if it's not x-men you had fucking basically any street fighter character at the time you could think of it, it was monumental this game was peak again i can't explain and how stress how much like seeing that game and playing it was back in the day and just seeing the arcade like run of that shit in the in the early 2000s was so peak that shit was amazing especially if you were like me who grew up like in like and the coney, I coney island uh, arcade scene around that time shout outs to my new yorkers they know what the fuck i'm talking about Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was fucking peak. It was just, gameplay was the tightest. Everything about that game was just the tightest. And then that game was also ported to 
Dreamcast, PS2, Xbox. But of course, the best version was the was the I believe was the um, fucking Dreamcast version because that felt like the most arcade version. Everyone else had some broken shit to it, and yeah, the game was just fucking bonkers. Like, yeah, some of the characters are kind of busted. <laughs> and some characters are better than others, but for the most part, that game was just so accessible for everyone. It was like, it was everything. And it, it felt like Capcom was like, yo, this is probably our last time ever working on this game as a, as a team with Marvel. But fuck it, we going hard. And Capcom uh, was allowed to cook because of Marvel. Marvel believed in them, and they cooked, and they cooked fucking well. That being said, <clears throat> after this game came out, there was a lot of travesty. There was a lot of uh, sadness in both sides of the community. And for the cap for Marvel, uh, Marvel at that time was doing even worse than what they were. So it was even bad um, in the sense of at the time. They was like, okay, our our license agreement with Capcom, yeah, that's cool and all, but yeah, I don't, we don't care to renew that. We'd rather stick with Activision and have Activision do a bunch of games for us. And so at that time, they never re redid the the license for any of the for them to use the Marvel characters. So we never was able to get re releases of these games. Uh, and that was the key thing. We were, were not able to get re-releases of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was the most celebrated game because it was just appealing to everybody, but nobody could, assess, could, could get this game. This is why when you go on eBay, maybe even now, the game was like $200, $300 for the PS2 edition, the, the fucking, all the editions of the game. It was just impossible to play this game onto any hardware. It was just fucking insane how hard it was. And given the fact it was such a beloved game and every other fighting game around that time, it was just ridiculous that Marvel never renewed the license or allowed them to renew the license. And then also over at Capcom, it was the saddest time because Capcom wasn't doing fighting games that much anymore. They were kind of like doing their 3D stuff. Um, they, they, were they were booming, but they weren't doing fighting games. It wasn't until I want to say around 2008, around the time for I want to say around Street Fighter 4. This is when Capcom was going through their fighting game renaissance era where they got their groove back. Also for Marvel, Marvel was back at it with the fucking with this really dope uh uh, movie franchise. I don't know if you heard of it. It's called the MCU. Uh, around that time, the MCU was kicking off, and at that time, these guys were both were building themselves up to be better people and, and better companies. Uh, and around that time, they were also bought out around, I believe, with Disney. So it was it was it was a growing time, and it was time for them to reunite, and they reunite the shock the whole community again by saying yeah so about our friendship i would like to continue it by re-releasing marvel vs capcom 2 for the 360 and ps3 and it was fucking awesome all right every week we had a new trailer a new like little trailer and whatnot for the launch of that game new artwork new sprites everything it was fucking awesome and the cool thing is that you had the developers talking about what they added to the game so they made the the landscape even bigger which led into some uh a little bit of glitches in the game but it was visual glitches in the game uh because they stretched the screen a lot and it wasn't supposed to be like that originally so some shit in the in the in the background looks like it's unfinished but for the most part we were all able to play marvel vs capcom 2 with friends because that was the first time marvel vs capcom 2 was able to be played with friends and it was just fucking dope man it was just like 
again, it was a really great moment, a really great time. It was so a huge hit to the point it was the best selling DLC or or digital um, game uh, for years. It, it was the digital game that everyone was owning. It was so huge. It was it was phenomenal. That's how fucking dope it was. All right, all right. So so when people talk about Marvel vs. Capcom two. Just know the legacy and the power and, and, and how it meant to people. You know, it, it was that huge. And then the icing on the cake was that wasn't all. Two years later, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 gets announced. Fate of Two Worlds. And we were all fucking hype. Figuring out what character was going to make it in, what character wasn't. Um, the art style was way more comic booky like or more uh, on a shell shaded like up to this day it, I still love the art style of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 more but Marvel vs. Capcom 3 style was really dope it made it look like characters the Capcom characters in particular look like manga characters and the, and the, cat, and the Marvel characters look like comic book characters which really felt cool um but then the game comes out, and the community, for the most part, I think we pretty much all agreed we liked it, but there was a lot of stuff missing. Um, and at that time, it was really because of, like, when you think of back at the characters of Marvel vs. Capcom, you know, each Marvel vs. Capcom game represents the year of the popularity of the characters or what what is the trend of that particular what is the trend of the company at the time and so that's why in marvel vs attack on three we had characters like dante uh fucking uh wesker because uh, those devil may cry 4 had just came out uh fucking resident evil 5 had wesker you know, Chris, you know, these characters were so fucking cool, but we were still missing a lot of characters. And also the game was very bare bones. There was nothing really there for that game. And just like Marvel 2, Marvel 3's online wasn't that great. So, you know, it is what it is. But this is where the story got a little fucking crazy or a little fucked up. Because this is around the time Capcom was starting to do their dark. They was going down the dark path. They were going through the dark ages of Capcom. And so one of their craziest shit that they decided to do was uh, announce a, another addition to Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Seven to eight months before the game had even made it to a year. So we had a new edition of the game and we were all like, what the fuck? Like, it was, it was just like a really dumb moment. I've heard different reasons that Marvel didn't want them to make enough, uh, make it as a DLC. It had to be standalone and whatever. I I heard so many different things, so I can't even tell you. Uh, I heard that it was because of the earthquake around that time for Japan. It was kind of hard to communicate with Marvel. So many different stuff that I don't even know where to begin with the game. But truth be told. If you really ask anybody about Marvel vs. Capcom 3 right now, they will tell you Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is an amazing game. It was a fun game. Uh, the Ultimate Edition was even better because we had even more cool characters like Ghost Rider, fucking, fucking Virgil, which was fucking busted. Everybody knows Zero May Cry. <laughs> fucking busted ass team. Um, it was just wild. The game was just wild. It was fantastic. It was everything people would probably hope for. And yeah, it was pretty much what we all kind of wanted. The cap, the Marvel side of the roster was a little weird because, of course, Marvel around this time, Marvel's getting a little too, yeah, you know, a little cocky, but not too cocky. You know, it was still kind. It was getting a little hard to get certain characters because. Marvel didn't want to play ball on certain characters, like certain X-Men characters. And then also they wanted to promote, again, stuff from the MCU. So this is why we have Rocket Raccoon. And you're like, well, what the fuck is a Rocket Raccoon? 
And that's only because Rocket Raccoon had a movie in two months. I mean, two, I think two years, a year. So it was, it was really weird at the time. But again, it was, it was also cool. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is cool. And you see how it became and what it is right now. And it was just banging. It was just banging. But then the Dark Ages happened for both Marvel and Capcom. And I'm also throwing Marvel in this because this is when Marvel started becoming really cocky with their IP. And just started saying, okay, well, that's cool. I'm glad you guys enjoyed our games. But yeah, the re-releases that we did for Marvel vs. Capcom uh, 2, yeah, we're delisting that because, yeah, Capcom, it, Capcom didn't give us uh, money to re renegotiate the license for those characters. So fuck it. Yeah, you, just give us our shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, we're taking that game off. Uh, X-Men, um, I think we had the Marvel Origin Collection. Take that shit off as well. So again, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, once again, could not get. If you had already downloaded the game, you were, you were pretty much in the clear. You were pretty much the most luckiest motherfucker at that time to uh future proof your shit and buy two copies of the game and what made it even worse the dig um the uh physical copy versions of marvel vs. Capcom 2 re-release for the ps3 and xbox 360 those were only digital codes and if anybody knows about the digital codes around that time uh the codes expire at a certain at a certain point so that means marvel vs. Capcom to once again was unattainable and again this is where marvel was just like being fucking greedy because they're like okay well we're gonna go back to activision but i don't even think we want to do activision no more and also at the time you know disney you know had their video game um part of their company so we probably might work with them but not really fuck them because we're about to close that part of part of the studio down because uh, it's just not worth spending and, and, and investing into that shit. So Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was once again delisted. Uh, and then we get into even more Dark Ages. Capcom's just doing a bunch of dumb shit. Making very poor decisions. Making questionable decisions. It was a fucking nightmare uh, from both companies. And it, it led us to getting... Ultimately, the Grim Reaper of the of the Marvel vs. Capcom games, which was MVCI, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. This was the most rushed and uninspired Marvel vs. Capcom game. I think everybody will admit they they fucked up. They fucked up. Like I've ever seen. This was the most fucked up Marvel game I've ever seen. Like, this felt like they made this shit in a day, and they didn't give a shit, alright? Now, luckily, it's Capcom, so, you know, Capcom comes with that gameplay. But, man, everything was just bad. I don't need to tell you how bad the, the fucking character designs were. Holy shit, they try to go for this more realistic look for the characters, and everyone looks horrible. Chung Lee looks horrible. Fucking Iron Man, when he takes off his, taking off his fucking mask, it looks horrible. All the face models of horrible Dante. Oh my goodness! And what made it worse is that uh, they had the fucking DMC Devil May Cry Dante design as a unlockable costume. Which why? It's just so much wrong with that game. They added a story mode again to please the casuals because you know Marvel vs. Capcom has always been a casual fighting game with deep mechanics for the hardcore. So they wanted to do a story mode, and the story mode, while it was interesting, could have been very interesting considering the fact of what it was trying to do, it was basically Infinity Gaunt Infinity War before Infinity War. <laughs> I think it was coming out like a few uh, a year before Infinity War. So yeah, like <laughs> or before Endgame. Yeah, so it was like, wow, that that that's a perfect tie-in. But the story is ass. The story is stupid. It's nonsensical. It's dumb. Again, characters are looking awful. And it was just like really, really horrible. Really, really horrible. And in terms of gameplay, 
while some may really love the gameplay i think my greatest issue with the gameplay was was really just how really bad the switching mechanic was uh there was some broken mechanics but the switching mechanics in particular was fucking horrible like at, at any moment and at any combo you can switch characters that was crazy to me so i didn't never like that feature it was really dumb and again the game was just not not well it was critically panned and what was the nail in the coffin was around that time marvel versus i mean i think oh dbz fighters dragon ball fighter was just announced and shown off and it was everything we wanted a marvel versus capcom game to be 2v 2v or 3v3 uh characters are looking impressive and great callbacks to the anime it was just amazing marvel infinite didn't have any of that and people fucking hated it um only the hardcore people love that game and it had a, it has a little it has a cult following but man it was rough and at that point it was kind of like the coffin marvel was like okay well this game fucking sucks because we kind of fucked it up because yeah certain characters they wouldn't allow um capcom to have like they wouldn't allow them to have the x-men because at the time x-men was owned by x-men the movie rights was owned by fox and that was their competitor and they were like no fuck that so we're not doing anything with the x-men um including in video games and more importantly in the comics like do i need to remind people of killing off wolverine or worse the worst one of all i like the death of wolverine arc but the worst was oh my goodness the death of x oh my goodness what it was trying to replace the x-men with the inhumans and pushing the inhumans does anybody remember the inhumans fucking tv show yeah i beg to differ so yeah it was just really nonsense at the nonsense at the real nonsense of just developing that game and they were rushed as fuck so ultimately marvel was just like yeah I, I think this is it and at the time anytime we would ask the heads of the marvel video game um portion of the of the franchise you know they would be like yeah we have no comment on marvel versus capcom but hey, uh, you know, we re-released this arcade machine, which only a select few of people is going to have the money or the space to keep that shit. It was fucking annoying being a Marvel fan. You couldn't get shit done. You couldn't get nothing done <laughs> without talking to these motherfuckers and they had nothing to say. All right. It was really rough. And it was really sad. But what kept us Marvel fans going for the longest time was the community. Alright, it was the community. The community was holding it down. Whether it be Marvel 3 getting a, a, a port release for the PC and just the modders going ham by adding new characters, uh, adding new stages, uh, and just going ham with that. And just overall, like, tournament people were just holding events around before the pandemic. Uh, we were supposed to get a Marvel 2 tournament. Like, people, like, was pushing hard for Marvel. You know, even when Capcom and Marvel didn't seem to care, the community cared. And this is why I talk so highly about the community of Marvel. Because these motherfuckers were the live stream of the fucking, um marvel license they they were going hard with new content um new tournaments that would that would fucking sell out and be doing well it was it was so impressive what the marvel community was doing and it wasn't until a little youtuber i want to say a little he's kind of big I, I don't know if you heard of him uh it wasn't until a video came out by one of my favorite YouTubers named Maximilian Dude came out with this amazing call to arms. Once again, just like his forefathers before him, Max 
raised the flag for us to stand up and was like, hey, you know, it's kind of fucking weird that we don't have a re-release or a port to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This is the most beloved game. Why don't we have a port to it? And we were all like, yeah, why don't we? And so he led the charge and was like, hey, let's get Marvel and Capcom to notice this shit and let's put free Marvel 2 on social media and have have it be retreated everywhere. And I and at the time when I first 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 saw it, I was like, I there's no possible way this shit's gonna work. But then it fucking blew up. Like everyone was retreating, sending fan art to Marvel and Capcom. It was blown the fuck up. It was so huge. We had celebrities like Michael B. Jordan, you know, fucking Killmonger talking about the shit. We had one moment in the NBA, I, I think one of the NBA final where the grid, one of the grids uh, for the NBA players, it literally was the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 grid. Motherfucker, we were going hard as a motherfucker. All right. We were going hard as a motherfucker. All right. Like, it, it was incredible. It was lasting on... It lasted so hard on social media for at least... Uh, I almost want to say a month that this shit was going hard. And it was Max that led the charge. This motherfucker is too modest, in my opinion. Max is too modest, all right? I would have been like, yes, I'm the one that fucking did it. All right, fuck all you guys. But nah, like... Generally, all thanks to Max, it was let it was it, it was the spark that led us all to fight hard for Marvel. Where people was making videos, including myself, was making videos on why Marvel vs. Capcom Two is so important to me as you know, you know, as a young man who's um, never really trying to get involved with the FGC, you know, to eventually being able to like go and spectate and watch and be comfortable around people it was all marvel versus capcom 2 that was able to pave that way and then the and then the hype died down the the charge was was down but we always we always would say at least for me i would always say marvel versus capcom 2 is going to come back it's gonna come back. We just have to have faith. Keep pushing. Keep talking about it. And then Nintendo hit us with their direct of June 2024. And then we see the shit said, I'm gonna take you on a wild ride. Capcom logo. With the Ryu, the old Marvel vs. Capcom Ryu fucking poster. And all of us unanimously fucking lost their minds seeing Marvel vs. Capcom come back. So, if you didn't stick along for this video, and you probably are like, I'm tired of hearing this shit, get on with it. Why is Marvel vs. Capcom 2? And these games are so important. It's because Marvel vs. Capcom, to me and to many others, is the people's fighting game. This game bridged the gap between casual audience and hardcore fighting game fans to come together and enjoy two different brands coming together to enjoy just a, a single product. It was phenomenal. And it's amazing. And at the time, it was unaccessible to everyone. But now that it is back, and with this collection being coming out very soon, now we are able to now embrace and have the dream be fully realized that Marvel is finally fucking back. And this paves the way. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Because the truth be told, just because we're getting this collection... Does not mean that Marvel vs. Capcom 4 is going to happen. So I, I hate to break it to you. If you think they're working on Marvel vs. Capcom 4 right now. No, we're still going through Street Fighter. I mean, we're going through Street Fighter 6 shit. But it paves the way for the future. 
And as long as we keep dreaming about this shit, as long as we keep fighting for this shit, motherfucker, eventually, not now, but eventually we'll get Marvel vs. Capcom 4. And when that shit happens, I'll be satisfied. And I could die a happy man. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, please comment and rate all that fun stuff. Let me know what do you think of the uh, of this collection. Uh, what game are you going to be playing <laughs> off the collection? I'm going straight to Marvel 2. <laughs> um, and yeah, let me know. Comment below. And as always, stay tuned. It's your boy, Mr. Degenerate, signing out. Have a good one. Peace out.